Uh, from a technology perspective, yes. You know, ultra low latency uh, is, is generally measured in, in nanoseconds, so therefore behind it will come technologies like um, hollow-core fiber, uh, low switches and low latency switches and routers, uh, right the way up to low orbit satellites. Um, so yeah, technology will define the difference between ultra low and low, but also the end user. Um, who, who, uh, what is the requirement for the end user? Um, as I said, it is quite a unique and specific subset of, of, of end users that want the ultra low latency product. So it's mainly driven by the uh, by the financial industry, and it's been historically like that. Uh, there are other uh, markets area uh, where the latency is uh, impacting their uh, end user experience. Uh, I can think of the gaming industry or the, the streaming industry, for instance. But once again, it's the the, the sensitivity of their recruitment or of the ex experience for the end users that drives between ultra low latency and low latency. So you always try to find the, the middle grounds where you need to be. And in the financial industry, the middle ground is being the fastest and always trying to be the fastest every time. I would say even within the financial community, there is a subset. Um, so the high frequency traders that lead you to uh, delivering ultra low latency products. Um, behind them, you, you might get the hedge funds or the prop proprietary uh, traders, or even the tier one and tier two banks. Um, and to them, low latency or ultra low latency is a slightly different product. Um, and uh, this is where the tiering of latency can come into it, 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 into its own. So near low latency, second or third best latencies all have their place in the market. 